Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and it feels like spring today here in New England. It's pretty nice out, and I have the tiniest little bits of daffodils trying to poke their heads up in my garden, so I thought we would try to paint some daffodils for spring. I'm going to use a new technique I've seen demoed, and uh, I thought it would be kind of fun to try. So you're going to go along with me on this ride to see how it works out. So I'm going to uh, pull up your comments. So please, as you guys pop in, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And let me see. I'm going to put your comments here so I can see them. Perfect. Oh, hey, guys. Hi. Thank you guys for watching. All right. So how I started is I just took a little square canvas and I painted it black with acrylic. I've done a little sketch on my iPad of some daffodils. Sometimes I like to do my sketching and my ideas, getting them down on my iPad, which is kind of cool, in the Procreate app, which I love. Hey, Melissa. Hey, I'm in New England, too. I'm in Massachusetts. Where are you from? Hey, Catherine. So I'm going to kind of just by eye sketch that little uh, pattern on that I devised. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do it kind of heavy and chalk, and that's part of the technique. So let's see how it works. I'm going to copy my little design here. And it's just, these little daffodils are kind of fun. They've got like this little cup, little, it almost looks like a little teacup. And they've got the little, let me do it here so you can kind of see. Just these petals are going to kind of pop out all around. It's going to be nice and bright and cheery and yellow. I kind of did a stem here. We'll put some flowers in front. I've got a big one facing forward. They've got those fun little faces. So here is this guy facing us. It has some little designs, little stamens in the middle. And we're going to just put these out. Might put some leaves in there just to get some green. But the technique is painted black with your black acrylic. Oh, yeah, in Lakeland. Yeah, my, my um, brother's in-laws live in Lakeland and some friends of theirs as well. So, yeah, not far at all. I was just came back. My flight was, uh, I missed my flight on Sunday, so I came back on Monday. Hi from Oklahoma. Hey, Rhonda. Nice. Thanks for watching. Oh, and Melissa's right here close by in Taunton, so that's kind of cool. And so we're going to have another little daffodil face in this way. So it's that little cup shape. It's like a little cup shape. It's got this little frilly top bit. This one kind of goes like that. And then it's just got these little petals that come out. And this guy needs a little stem too. So I sort of made something maybe crossing over and come down to here. And you know what? Let's, they've got those long, not small leaves, but those long kind of leaves. So we could do something like this, maybe. Something like that. I'm purposely sketching it a little heavy with chalk. And you'll see why in a, in a little bit. Um, so if this kind of comes down the stem this way, but I think I'd rather just have some of these leaves come up like this. So a great thing about sketching with chalk is you can just wet your finger, wet a brush, and get out any little bits that you don't like. I do use chalk lots of times when I'm sketching on a painting. I'm in the middle of a painting and I want to add something. If you put it on with chalk, you can erase it so easily after you've painted. You don't have to try to follow the lines really well. You can just afterwards just um, erase them. Hey, Tennessee, we're all over. Georgia, hey, Shelby, how are you? Hey, Patty. Oh, you guys are great, Sharon. Hello, all you guys for watching. So. So far, painted the background black, sketched on a little heavy with my chalk. Got my colors out. I have my colors out. They're just acrylics. I've got some shades of yellow, a couple of oranges, some green. I think I will use a turquoise blue for the background. And the little stamens in the middle, I thought, um, you know, when you throw opposites from the color wheel together, they pop. So I've got opposite of yellow, purple. I'm going to do those little stamens purple. Hey, Pam. Raining. Patty, yeah, I was down there. It was raining a little bit, but it was much nicer than here, even, even um, with the little cooler Florida temps that you guys had. So I'm going to put up some reference photos over here now that I have saved. I've got one here on my desktop. I'm going to pull it up, but I can still see you guys' comments. So please, any questions as you go along, pop them in there or just say hello, which is kind of nice. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to paint the colors of the flowers, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to take, I'm going to start maybe with the darker yellow. Yellow on top of the black might not cover great. We'll do a few coats if we need to. We'll add a little white if we need to. So the technique for this is I'm going to go in and paint around the chalk lines. What that's going to do is give me kind of a black border around all the elements. So when 
I'm all done painting, I'm going to get rid of those little chalk lines and it's going to have a bit of a wonky um, outlined uh, look to it, which I've done a lot when I paint. I love I paint with a red background a lot when I'm doing landscapes. I love a red background. Paint your landscape and leave some of that red peeking through. And for some reason, it just it just works. So I love that. Actually, with my membership tonight, we're painting some little Irish cottages with that red background. So when those are finished, I'll post some pictures so you can sort of see. Um, but this is going to be a little bit of a black background. And sometimes when I paint. I do go with the Sharpie and I draw it on the white canvas in a black Sharpie. I might have a picture around like that. I could show you. And then I paint in the lines like this and then go back and outline with Sharpie. But this looked like a fun technique. I'd seen it demoed in an art, um, uh, meet, uh, one of my art association meetings. And I thought, let's try it with the flowers. So can you see I'm leaving a good bit of room between and I'm just got that sketchy chalk line and I'm just painting inside just inside it. You can use any brush you want. I, I think this brush is a little big, but I'm going to try it. If I need to, I'll switch to a smaller one. It's not as easy to see what the black lines are going to be like because of all that mess with the chalk, but it's going to be fun and we will see how it looks. Hey, Carol, I miss you. I'm going to actually hopefully be up in Maine on Monday. So hopefully I'll see you. Maybe I can pop in and see you. That would be nice. All right, so I'm going to put some shading and whatnot on this color, but right now let's just fill it in. And again, see how I'm sort of leaving a little line of black through there? Just use the chalk as your guide and just fill inside. I'm gonna start with yellow for all these guys. I'm not gonna leave them all the same shade of yellow. I will make some a little more orangey, maybe some a little more light yellow, but let's get it based in with this yellow. It's on my brush and we just get going with it. Can you see, I didn't worry about fitting my whole flower in the middle of the canvas. I have it kind of going over the edge, which is a cool look. This is a fun technique. Um, don't know what it's gonna look like, but it's fun to do so far. And isn't that the idea? Uh, that's what we do this for is to have fun. We're not here to stress out about how it's going to look and, and, and all that business. Let's just have fun with it. You can be an artist too. Just pick up a paintbrush. Carol's husband um, does beautiful artwork. Okay, so I am just getting an idea where this is going to go. And I'm just filling in very loosely. I'm not fussing or worrying about lines. Carol, has Fred been painting? These days, what is he working on? He's always got some cool things. All right, so it's just very basic. I know it's probably not the most interesting thing to watch here, but I'm dying to see how this works because if this little technique works, it'll be fun for all sorts of paintings. It's really like um, filling in the, coloring in the lines. I don't even mind so much the, black showing through a little bit. I'll cover it up and get it a little brighter, but I don't mind that. So there we have it. We have my flowers filled in. I'm going to just wipe off the brush and go into the green for the leaves and stems. Um, it's darker color, so I don't need to wash it off. I'm just going to go right into it. I have a dark green here. It's kind of like a phthalo green. It's a little bit on the blue green side. We're going to start with that. It's dark, I know, but let's just get in where we want it to be, and then we can worry about lightening it up. And see, I'm leaving the chalk lines around. I'm trying to be careful and just go a little bit inside the lines. It's a little stem there. Because those lines are going to show us where to go with our background. And I'm going to put that in next, too, while these bits and pieces are drying. So... I don't have any chalk lines here, but I do want a little bit of a leaf. So I'm going to just put it in and I'll just make um, my background a little on the outside edges. So is there a tracer for the daffodils? Um, Denise, I just sketched it on, but I'll tell you what, I can easily make a tracer from my Procreate sketch. So what I will do is make that tracer 
And I'll go back through the comments here. So if anyone wants the tracer, just let me know. I'll go through the comments and send that to you, but I'll also post it on the page. So um, you know what I'll do is I'll put it in the comments of this video. So this video will be up on the page and I'm also gonna put it on YouTube and I will make sure the tracer is available there with a link to Dropbox for you. So no worries, but but to try sometimes these little guys just to sketch them, they're not, they don't have to be perfect. They could be a little wonky. So um, always, Give it a whirl sometimes just trying to sketch things on, but I'm happy to make a tracer anytime for any of my designs. It's super easy. If you need a certain size, this little, I think is like an eight by eight inch canvas. I like it on the square format though. So I would, I could do it other square sizes. If you need a different size, always just let me know. And I'm happy to do that. Yeah, Pam, I'll get that to you guys. Don't even worry. I'm going to paint this kind of a blue. It's a little bit on a tealy uh, turquoisey side which I love that color. I'm gonna paint that in now in the bigger areas. I don't, I took a little brush out, which I'll need for some places, but let's just do the big spots first. Let's hop in. Yeah, I have some little tiny canvases that I love and you can buy them in the packs at the art and craft stores and they come with a little easel sometimes. You sit them on a windowsill or put them in little groupings. They're really fun, They're really fun to uh, play around with. Okay, so I love that color, especially with the, with the yellows, it's gonna really pop. So I'm sort of, again, just going on the outside edges of my chalk. Of course, the best part of this is going to be the big reveal when we take a little wet cloth or a brush and get rid of all those chalk lines. Then we'll really see if this technique works. So I, again, am just, there's a little space between the objects. If it stays a little chalky. I can go back in with just a little brush and some black and deepen it up too, or any little place that I might have missed. So that's always um, an option afterwards too. When I do these wrap gallery wrapped canvases, I usually paint my edges as I go to. I won't do it now, so you don't have to watch. Like it's like watching paint dry, but it is nice because if you don't want to frame it, you don't have to. You could just put it right a little push pin in the wall, and off you go. You've got your painting hung. That's nice. The canvases are so light. You could just do that. Yeah, I love this idea, too. Um, I think it'll work. I think it'll be fine. It's all about experimenting, too, right? And, and it's maybe I should have done it before I came on live with you guys to paint it. But I thought it's kind of fun to have somebody to paint with. Um, and you guys are so good to to take a few minutes and watch. I do appreciate it. And I know, if, like me, I'm sure a lot of you are looking forward to spring, too. I'm full of spring. Yeah, I'm trying to think spring. I tell you, it's a beautiful day today, finally, here. I do want to get out and go for a walk at some point, but uh, the day's getting away from me today. What are you all looking forward to doing in the spring? What's the thing that you like the best when the weather gets... And some of you are, are watching from beautiful uh, locations where you have nice weather all year long. But here in New England, it's kind of crazy. Oh, okay, Shelly. Oh, good. You made a little bunny. I would love to see it. Give us, give it, Post it on the page. We'd love to see your work, too. Love to see. Actually, all you guys, I'd love to see. It doesn't have to be something you painted with me or whatnot. Please just share it. I'd love to see all your work. We have a great community here, and it's great to interact with everyone and learn from each other and just make new artistic and creative friends. I will get into these smaller bits in a moment with my smaller brush. The dark green is so close to the black, it's hard for me to even see, but I do see it there, so I am going to go around it. And I think I'll grab my smaller brush now to get in the little bits and pieces. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle a little bit. Hike in the mountains. Yeah, I love hiking too. Not in the cold so much, but I'm looking forward to getting out there before long. We've got some great trails really local here, which are, are really nice to, to explore. Some waterfalls. So I'm just going into the little bits and pieces here. I'm not worrying. Again, I'm, don't stress. I want you guys to enjoy painting. I know I have so many people that are joining and when they join some of my groups I ask like what they struggle with and what's the biggest struggle and what can I help them with so so many of us the answers are the same you know you try to be perfect you try to get everything just so and and to be honest guys relax and have fun because if you want to be perfect and just so you're going to take a photograph and you know isn't this much 
more fun than than taking a photo that you put on your phone and you don't look at. Just have fun with it. It's acrylic paint too, so you can paint it over completely when you're done if you really don't like it. So you're not tied into it. Just I want you to to it to bring joy and not stress. Enough stressful things going on in the world. We need to bring some color and joy to our lives. This would really be cool in a purple background too. You don't have to have like a sky color or anything, but a purple background with these little uh, yellow daffodils would really, really pop too. I don't know if I've painted daffodils in a while. We did. We did a little uh, uh, still life with some daffodils in a vase in the group. So yeah, kind of fun. I do have the group here on Facebook. I've got um, another platform where I have a group. You are welcome to join. I, I, I always post links to that. I will do that. And I also have a membership, which uh, is kind of cool. We do a lot of painting in the membership. I do some special paintings. We paint live together a lot. That is closed at the moment, but in the spring, we'll open it up again. So keep your eye out for information about that if you want to learn more. I will be posting some things some here and there about that. So this is really fun. I love getting these little bits and pieces. Look, you could even get like a tiny bit here. Um, this one could be a little closer. Like I said, we can touch up what's going to be black later. And you can't really see it. It looks chalky right now, but those are going to be little black outlines. Now, our yellow has dried. So let's go back, get that a little darker. I'm going to add, some, like I said, some oranges in and some lighter yellows. And I think I have a couple of reference photos here. I'm gonna, okay, that's a good one. I do like to get the yellow on there first. I've got three shades of yellow. I might dip into some of the others as I go and make them just so it's not all the same shade everywhere. But the black is, I don't mind it showing through a bit, but it's a little bit um, too see-through. So I'm gonna do more of the yellow a little bit here and there. I'm not worried about following every little line. But I'm just slapping on some yellow here and there. And then I'll go back and add some, like some oranges coming out of the little cup part, maybe some down here. If some area is a little bit darker, it would have a shadow. If, you know, the top of these petals sometimes would be in shade. I'm going to add a little bit of orange as a shading, uh, as a shadow color. They're looking a little Van Gogh-y like, aren't they? Went to the Van Gogh exhibit, the traveling one. Anybody else go to that? That was pretty cool. Stress relief, yes. Oh, I don't see your name, but I know it's you, Linda, there, because when I don't have the name, it says Facebook user. But, yeah, Linda's one of my members, and we have a blast, right, Linda? And Linda just finished up some gorgeous paintings for some collectors, and she has been selling her paintings, which is fabulous, and having fun doing it. So I'm so happy for you, Linda, for getting those commissions all done and out the door. Now you can paint some fun things and just for, to play around. Yeah. So I'm just quickly just putting in some more color. Just see how it's getting. It's just a little brighter. After this, I'm just going to do some highlighting and some shading with the different oranges and yellows. But I wanted one more coat just to get a little bit brighter. And when we get some of the light greens on these leaves, they're going to, and the stems are going to really pop. I paint dark to light. I paint some dark colors first and I build up and I slowly build up. And the best part is at the end when everything just pops because you've got those layers and layers getting lighter and lighter each time. If you had just painted really bright to begin with, you'd have no pop. So you have to, even though it's a light object, you've got to start a little darker sometimes. So we've just about got a little bit of that yellow everywhere here. Now I'm going into just that really goldy yellow and then a little bit lighter yellow. Any primary, any yellows you have would be fine. There we are. And now I want to get some orange in there. And I've got kind of a burnt orange here. I've also got a little bit brighter, more of a, apple, a pumpkin spice kind of a color. I've painted rather quickly and, and with a purpose because I would like to be able to get in here and add some of these shadows while this yellow is wet so I can kind of blend it. Can you see how that sort of is blending pretty nicely? The bottom of that little cup shape, I want to be a little darker. And that's the advantage. The inside of this, you see that little cup kind of I just inside there, I want it a little darker. 
But where the yellow is still a little wet, I'm able to go in there with this darker color, say for instance here. And if you need to, just dry your brush off on your paper towel, use that dry brush and you can blend. See how nicely that blends? Blends that orangey color right into the yellow. Because my first color is still wet. Acrylics dry fast and then they're hard to budge. And I'm a big oil painter. I love oil painting and I can blend and blend and blend. I can't with my acrylics, so I force it to act like oil paints by painting fast, maybe a little heavier with my color so it stays wet. And then going on to it quickly and laying in the darker color, drying off my brush, and then using that to soften if it needs to. If you are wet and wet right off the bat, those colors are going to blend for you without really even trying. But if it doesn't, you can dry your brush off and just use the dry brush to soften it. I'm going between the darker orange and the lighter just to give it a little variation. You can see where I'm sort of shading inside the little cup area and then the bottom, if you see that little area, and the tops of the leaves up here. Looks like I didn't do a second coat there, but no worries. I'll just add a little light yellow there afterwards. There, even though it's a little darker. Same here, it's just where the petals are coming out. This part would maybe cast a little shadow. So we're just gonna go along there with that darker, a little bit orange. It's not too dark, it's not a lot darker. It's just a little bit. And the paint is drying a little bit. But I'm gonna go in and make a little bit of a lighter yellow with some white into this lighter yellow. If you have trouble in, in oranges and yellows in particular, very translucent, even on a light background, you need multiple coats. Whenever you have a color that's like that, if you take a little bit of white and add it, it gives it a little bit more of a opaque coverage. It really does help. Or you could even paint the object in white first. If you're doing sunflowers or something on a dark background and you really wanted them bright, paint them white first and then when it's good and dry, go on with your yellows and you, and you build up from there. I want this look of the darker showing through, but if you want something really light on a dark background, a blue or whatever, paint it white first. That would be that would be fine. Oh, Adrian, thank you guys. I love it when you um, let your friends know about me here. So I'm going to just go and put some little bits of lighter yellow that it's funny how on the camera it looks so much different now here it's sort of blended on the camera it looks like it needs to be blended taking my dry brush softening it in and that's a little tip to remember because if you're painting and you think something's off or you want to get an idea of what to do next take a photo or hold your painting up into a mirror and it's amazing how things just pop out i see more things on the camera here when i'm painting that i need to address than i do when i'm just looking at it so if you're stuck a little bit and you kind of want to take a little break, go ahead, take a look at the at the painting in the mirror or, the, or take a photo of it. And it's amazing how, how different your eye sees it. How does this look on the camera? Yep, so I'm getting some light areas. This little frilly edge would probably be a little lighter. You can even do a little turned edge here if you wanted. This would not be lighter because it's underneath, so I'm going to keep that dark. I'm going to give the little tips a little brightness. Around the edge of this is going to be a little brighter. You see how I'm just... And I don't have a real tight grip, so like I said about not stressing and trying to make everything perfect, I've got a real loose grip on my brush because I want to do this and not be trying to get a perfect line. Look at, I'm just kind of dabbing it, twirling the brush, dabbing it. I want a painterly, um, abstracty kind of look a little bit. So I am not going to grip that paintbrush too hard. I'm still trying to stay in what I painted already. I don't want to go too far out and lose my black edge. These guys I think um, if we did a little light maybe on one side, that might work because I don't want to do under here where it would be dark, but I do like to get that all the many shades on each petal that I can. And then I'm going to maybe now, it's funny, hear how harsh these lines look. I'm going to dry my brush off, maybe go back into one of the middle shades of yellow. And if I just softly brush it on top, look at it, sort of blended it all in. Go back into any of your colors that you've used, and you can dab some here and there. 
And it, what it does is it just gives each petal lots of different variations of the yellows, not all in order, not every one the same, but it's kind of nice to do that. Makes them each an individual. If it looks like there's too harsh of a line with those shadows, you can deal with that. Sometimes those little petals coming off would have like a little divot or a dip in it. So you could even go in and kind of do something like this. I get a little darker. So it could almost have the look of like a little bit of a, you know, how they have that little dent. Doesn't it? And again, when you do something like this, you don't have to be every one. It could just be here and there just to add some interest to some of them. And what do you think? I am looking at it and it really does need to have a little darker here because this is going to be underneath. So it did need a little shadow. It does need a little shadow under that little bit. Let's do that. This one's face on. It would be a little much darker, maybe right in the middle. We'll just do that. We'll get those little stamens coming out of there later. And this I made kind of like a little light lip where it kind of turned up, which would mean it might have a little bit of a shadow along there. And I'll soften that a little bit. So I think they look good. You can play around with them all you want. You could add some... Like if I take some white, just strong white, I don't want too much. And just here and there, sometimes you could just do a little bit of this. Not Again, not every one, but just another tone if you wanted to. I'm putting it on. I'm kind of softening it. I don't want it to be a harsh white line. There. I'm going to leave those be. I could fuss with them all day long, but I don't think I want to. And remember, sometimes you have to step away from your painting. This is a good painting to help you loosen up, actually, something like this, because it's not traced on perfectly. It's very wonky. So maybe try this technique with any kind of pattern. It doesn't have to be this one. It could be something else. And just try just tracing it on, outlining it with the thick layer of the chalk, and then painting around it. And maybe that will help. I'm going to put a little bit of the darker blue back in, and then I'm going to highlight those stems. And I'm going to mix some of this green with some yellow, because I want to get a brighter yellow, a brighter green now. Oh, I just said I was going to do the background. Okay, never mind. We're doing the stems and the, and the leaves then. So it was very dark, that green. Didn't really pop from the background, but it was a little bit of something. So now I'm going, and can you see it? You can't really in the in the video, but I'm getting a little lighter. I might go with straight yellow if I need to. Yep. And that could be enough. You don't have to really always go too far. Sometimes just this and leaving the brush strokes is enough. Isn't it fun to see that brush stroke? I'm going into just the yellow. My brush has some green on it, so it's not pure yellow, but it's light, which I like. And you could do it and build it up as much as you need to. If it fades in and you don't see it as that nice bright, you can just go back over it. I don't think I want to do too much um, detail. I think that's good. And I think it will sink in a little bit. So if you wanted to, you could even take your yellow with a little white and just a thinner line here and there if you wanted. As simple as that. Now, I think if we get that brighter background in here and there, a little brighter, it's going to really be a nice look. And I've hardly used any brushes for this. It's just this one, kind of a filbert. Um, you could use a flat. This filbert is just the rounded edge there. And they're just a synthetic brush. They're nothing fancy. And now when I do a second coat, can you see it brightens up? I do not want to cover this all perfectly and have a perfect... Uh, tealy blue background. I'm just going to dab it in here and there. I want it to stay dark in some places. And I like that look better than having it a solid color. can even mix a little white in if we need to. So let's just get it, get it on there and see if we want to add a little bit of white in places. I'm going to do the big areas with this filbert again and then go back in with the tinier brush to do those little bits and pieces there. You guys are good for coming along for the ride when we don't even know how this is going to look, but I think it's going to come out a-okay. I'm 
And I'm going to go to the smaller brush now because I don't want to lose my black lines. So I'll pop into these little areas that we did. All right. And then to give just another tiny little dimension because it's wet and I worked quick, taking that same brush I had to start, putting a little white in there. So I want to get it a little lighter. And here and there, because it's still wet, I could go on like this and sort of blend it as I go. I could leave it really brush strokey like this if you like that look, because I do. I like a painterly look. Or just with your dry brush, if you keep brushing it, you could have it blend in and be a little softer look. We don't want them all to look alike. We want them to all have their own personality. I don't want to hear it doesn't look like yours because when I paint this again, it won't look like this. They're always different. Makes it an individual uh, piece of art, which is the fun part. We don't want everybody's paint to look alike. We don't want just it to be like looking at photographs. I do like putting these little lights in here. And like I said, if it's too brush strokey, if it's too you know, not blended to your liking, no worries, because I would just go ahead in now with just wiping my brush off and using that soft brush to soften. So I do a lot of dry brushing techniques. I do a lot of blending like this. I, why I always keep a paper towel in my hand because I can always dry my brush off and use just the brush as a tool on its own for blending. And I know it's hard to like paint fast if you are a little unsure and you're not sure how it's going to look, but like again, with the acrylics, you can you, know, you can fix any little mistake or go over it. So, you know, try jumping in and trying some things like this using the brush strokes. It's kind of fun to, you know, stroke the paint all over here and there and uh, see if you like it. So the only thing we have to do now is I want to put the little stamens in there. They're kind of hang out on these guys, but this one, it's going to be more like just little dots. I don't know if this purple is dark enough but uh, if it's not, I'll mix it with a little blue, a little bit of navy or Prussian and dark blue there, because I want you to be able to see them. So in this guy, it would almost be like little dots, right? Just some little dots in there. These guys, they would be kind of just, I'm going to use a stroke from the end, the outside in, which means I'm going to give it a little pressure with my little round brush and then pull it in. So can you see that little shape? It's like a little comma stroke almost, a little... And that's all you need for these guys. They'll press, pull. I like to curve them a little bit. And I might just, on this one anyway, just kind of dot in a few little whites. I might take some a little bit of white and just along the side of these guys, maybe give them a little highlight. All right. And now a lot of this paint has dried, so maybe we can get that white um, chalk out and see what it looks like. Hey, Amy, here's my friend Amy Parker, and she's an amazing artist, and she can teach you guys how to sell and market your art. Linda's a, in, in uh, Amy's group, and Amy is helping her along, and look at her. She's having commissions picked up left and right. So Amy is um, your art marketing guru, as well as amazing painter. And we're going to paint tomorrow together, so I should have mentioned this. If you want to know when I go live to paint, I will send you a little text before. So this is my number, and I'll text you guys all tomorrow before Amy and I go on live live to paint together, 978-315-5650. I always forget to tell people this, but that's my number. I'm not going to spam you or anything, but whenever I go on like this to paint, I'll just give you a little heads up or if there's something exciting going on or some event or something. So if you'd like, just text me at the number. You'll be on my list. Easy peasy. Okay, let's get rid of these lines. I'll take some water on my brush. And let's see what this is going to look like. The big reveal. Amy, I just decided to try this technique. I've never done it before. Um, but we could even do something like this tomorrow. We're going to do those little Irish cottages. But uh, it's sort of a similar technique, only I use a red background. So maybe I'll play around with and show this and show people how to do both of those little techniques. We're gonna hang out and paint and chat 
And if you want to join us tomorrow, that is great. Amy, what time? If you want to put it in there, because I I forget, was it one o'clock? Put it in there. If anyone wants to pop on and see us tomorrow. But again, sign up on the texting list and you will get a notification. Of course, wait for paint to dry before you do this. Mine is drying pretty quick. I know a lot of you guys are all painters. One one o'clock, so we're gonna Amy and I'll be on at one tomorrow. Um, but do you have other crafty things you do? I love to paint. I've painted my whole life, but I'm always looking for a new craft and always trying fun new things. I'm sure I'm not alone, right? I've tried needle felting recently, which is so much fun, except for I poke myself constantly. And I do paint silk scarves, which is a real passion, which I love, which I'll share with you guys. I'll put some pictures up. I'm working on some new ideas now and that. So, so there we are. I kind of like it. What do you think? Not bad for like wondering if it's going to work. And now you could go in with your little liner brush if you needed to. If you had a place that did not cover or, you know, got wonky, you can go in. I don't think I need to, but if you wanted to, you could take your black. And if there was a space where you needed to touch up, you could do that. Like I said, I don't want this to be too uh, fussy. So you really don't have to really do any of this. But if there's a place that bothers you, you've lost your line. It's a little fuzzy. You want it a little neater. You could certainly just with your black do this. I like it. What do you guys think? It was a fun experiment. I think so too. It didn't take long. How long have we been painting? Half an hour, 36 minutes. A lot of chit chat though too. So I'll be painting time. But there it is. And I can't wait to, to try other designs with this um, technique. I was going to come on and do like a little teacup with a bird sitting on it, which you see lots of, but I, I love the, like, is it the willow wear? Or the, what is it with the blue, uh, the China with the blue designs? Um, I have an idea for next month in the members, we're going to do like a group of vases with that kind of a uh, design, but I was going to do a little teacup like that with a little blue bird sitting on it. I couldn't decide on what color background, so I said, we'll do this. But it is like, kind of like stained glass. Yeah, Pam. It was pretty quick, Christy. And like I said, I paint fast sometimes because I want to blend. But something like this, you don't want to fuss with it. I try to teach you guys um, to how to loosen up a little bit, have fun. I mean, of course, some of our paintings are a little more, a little more detailed. I'll show you some that we're doing. You might have seen them that I'm doing in the membership. We did, um, for this month, we did this waterfall let's see can you see it there it is no it's hard on that camera we did this waterfall so that looks pretty detailed right you think oh that's too hard that's too detailed it's really not and some of the ladies that painted it might even be able to tell you um very vague very abstract looking with some dabs of color and some mark making dark dark to start with the waterfall bringing it lighter and lighter this little bunny which we did um looks pretty detailed. So it's not always a loose painting, but still I make it pretty easy. It's It looks detailed, but I do it step by step and show you from again, dark to light, how to get the effects. So it doesn't always have to be super loose, but these are great fun little paintings, aren't they? Um, I really like it. And you could just sign your name with a Sharpie or something or your paintbrush. And uh, oh, thank you guys. Hey, thank you guys for watching again. I was on yesterday painting something. I don't even remember. What were we painting? Uh, something. Oh, shamrocks. Um, and then I thought I'd pop on today with something a little more, a little more spring-like. And if you want to know when I'm coming on live, like I said, just text me. You can take a screenshot if you want of that. So you have it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Amy and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for painting with me. And feel free to share me with your friends because um, if they're learning to how to paint or want to learn, I think anybody can learn. It's not like I was born an artist. I can't draw a straight line. I, I can't do this. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll make it easy for you and you can embrace your creative side and it will be kind of cool. Okay. I'll leave you go now. Okay. Bye guys. Have fun.